Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. In this podcast, we'll look at what artificial intelligence can do and is already doing to preserve and promote European cultural heritage and museums and consider the challenges and the opportunities that it brings with it. Stay with us. When Beethoven died in 1827, he left 40 sketches for an unfinished 10th symphony. But thanks to the development of digital technologies and machine learning techniques, what the master could not finish, AI did. We created an artificial intelligence that could compose in the style of Ludwig van Beethoven. Our idea was not to create an AI that could... um, replace human composers, but rather a set of tools that human experts can use to create a reconstruction of what a 10th symphony of Beethoven could have looked like. This was Dr. Matthias Roder, director of the Beethoven 10 AI project. But AI has also helped reconstruct the lost edges of Rembrandt's famous painting, The Night Watch, identified Lope de Vega as the writer of a theatre play whose author remained unknown, and analysed painstakingly detailed 3D digital models of the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris to help restore the full splendour of the building destroyed by the fire. Yes, what seemed like science fiction just a few years ago is now a reality. But applying AI in the public cultural domain requires a high degree of human involvement and investment in many areas. AI needs to be fed with high-quality data to be trained to perform its tasks. This data also needs to be interoperable and properly described with metadata. Moreover, copyright issues need to be cleared before such data can be used, and cultural heritage professionals need to learn how to navigate this complex terrain skillfully. So how is the European Union approaching this? In parallel to many international organisations, the EU has been scratching its head over AI and its various aspects and implications, pondering risks, benefits, resources needed and possible legal implications and societal impacts. And it's not an easy jigsaw. It definitely isn't. And one of the main problems is that there isn't a commonly agreed definition of what AI is at EU level, which is stalling debate around the Artificial Intelligence Act proposed by the European Commission. The European Parliament has repeatedly emphasised the need for common EU rules on accessible and human-centric AI technology and is convinced of the potential of AI to help in the preservation, restoration, documentation, analysis and management of our cultural heritage. Just think of the possibilities. Incorporating AI in custom screening procedures, for instance, could help authorities combat the illicit trafficking of cultural goods and artworks. AI technologies can also make cultural heritage more accessible especially for people with disabilities. And while in 2021 the use of AI by museums across the world was still incipient, COVID-19 turned the tables, forcing museums to speed up the digitalization of collections and devise new ways to connect with the public with the help of digitalization. Antoine Isaac from the Europeana Foundation spoke to us on behalf of the European Heritage Alliance and the European Heritage Hub. Culture is a sensitive area, and we expect high ethical standards from heritage institutions. This applies even more to the AI technology that those institutions could use. I mean, AI is a great potential for our field, and it can actually help us detect and maybe even mitigate biases in our collections. But it has issues of bias itself, and it often lacks transparency. So when applying it, we must care deeply for the humans on the receiving end. The EU has top museums and unique works of art that continue to attract millions of tourists from all over the world. Yet it depends on the United States for its online cultural platforms and on Asia for its ICT equipment. But new EU regulations promise to change this and to ensure cultural data produced in the EU stays there, benefits its creatives and is available for AI at the service of its cultural heritage and museums. In November 2021, the European Commission proposed the creation of a European data space for cultural heritage as part of its Digital Decade Policy Programme. The aim? 
to encourage national governments to support the digitalization of our cultural heritage and sites, as well as the development of advanced digital technologies and skills. A common European data space for cultural heritage will give institutions in this field the possibility to build on the scale of the single market, in line with the European data strategy. Based on the Europeana platform, museums, galleries, libraries and archives will be able to engage in new collaborations within this huge network of data partners and experts working in digital cultural heritage. But what challenges and opportunities do museums and cultural institutions face in adopting AI? Stay with us. Thanks to AI, the archiving, cataloging and management of collections can be done more easily and effectively. AI can also improve visitors' experience and management and offer new engagement opportunities for audiences. But there are also challenges. To use its full potential, museum staff need to know how to use AI and understand the possibilities it offers. But lack of awareness and technological skills, together with fear to infringe data protection or copyright laws, limits the uptake of the technology by cultural institutions. Digitalizing collections is also expensive. And while there are already a number of EU funds supporting AI use in cultural heritage, more investments are needed. So how does the future look like for the sector? Well, far from the gloomy narratives of a threatening AI, the mood is now one of acceptance, even excitement. As cultural heritage institutions step up efforts to digitalize collections and build up a common pool of data, EU member states will need to support these efforts and report progress. And to continue paving the way for the implementation of AI, the European Union will need to find solutions to issues such as copyright and data protection, ethics, accessibility or security. What's clear is that AI is here to stay, and it's already revolutionizing the way we approach the preservation and promotion of our cultural heritage. And as AI applications gain public acceptance and trust, maybe in the future we'll queue in museums to see an AI-generated painting or read a poem written by GPT-3. But in the meantime, check out the full policy brief by Magdalena pazikowska Schnaz and Yang Xin Lim on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.